This is Bridget Brown with Divine Essentials. All right, guys, so I'm back. <laughs> um, Sunday morning, I had spent the last few days in bed because of my knees. And then I woke up that morning getting ready to go to work and, like, projectile vomited. <laughs> and was like, oh, no. And so I ended up in bed again all day that day. I had to call in to work and... Um, I have no idea what it was. It was so weird, too, because, like, I had a huge dinner the night before, like, for the first time in a long time. Like, I was like, no, I'm getting, like, a big dinner. going to eat the whole thing. And then by the morning, it was like I had not, like, the projectile vomit was not food. It was just, like, liquid. It was, like, whatever I had just drank came back out. Um, so I really don't understand what why I even felt that way. Um, but I stayed in bed all day, and then... Today was the first day back to work after a few days off. Left knee, great. Right knee, we're still working on. The other new guy, Crun, I had called him Crud by accident one night. Um, so every time I think of him, I think of Crud now. But anyways, he, he got some knee thingies at like Walmart or Target or something. I can't remember what he said he got them, but they were only like 30 bucks. So I'm going to get them. Because they're not like the big clunky knee things, but they're protecting and like stabilizing. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to get some of those. That way, like, because I hit myself all the time, which I think ties into all of this shit. Um, and they say, re-experiencing symptoms such as anxiety, flashbacks, hypervigilance, or nightmares is among the most common disturbances with individuals with PTSD. Hypervigilance involves being on guard and highly sensitized to your surroundings in order to keep yourself safe. I literally made a, um, like on Instagram, there's a twin talk broadcast channel in there. And I had shared something recently because there's so many people out there who will try to trick you and hurt you. Um, I know I'm way more hypervigilant than other people just by the way that I like observe the world and like what's going on around me as opposed to like other people like when I say things to certain people and I can tell that they like have never thought about that or that it like it just isn't in their awareness some of that is because of my mom being like you're gonna die and like bringing my awareness to all the people like we would walk around in the mall and she'd be like you know, anybody who looked at us, she would have a problem with and be like, why'd you take a picture and it lasts longer? <laughs> like, um, and then also just the things that she would tell me, it was traumatic enough to be like, okay, we gotta be like hyper vigilant out here because there's people out here just killing people everywhere. But like a perfect example was today, driving my truck, doing Amazon, I often run into other delivery peoples and we will get like caught up together you know like me and a mailman will be like delivering to the same houses like I've had a mailman be like more than once are you following me <laughs> and I'm like yeah and then I'll get like a UPS driver but they usually come with a truck right not today there was a UPS driver or whatever I, yeah I'm pretty sure it was a UPS outfit it was an outfit there was no truck. He had like a small little car, no packages, but he would like stop at a house for a very long time. We'll go to a house and come back with no packages. And I'm like, what the hell is this guy doing? And I, and it confirmed to me too. Cause like I had to go to a house that he had just like, he was at that house. Right. And then he goes back to his car. I get up there and I'm like looking around. There's no package here. What did you do here? And so I start getting like watching him because I'm like, what is he doing? Is he like, is he sizing up these houses? Is he pretend? Because you could easily like, you got a friend that worked for UPS. You take their fucking thing and you you're now able to go size up all these people or take all their Amazon packages that are being delivered. Um, so. I don't know. I'm always on guard like that. And, and I don't like, you know, uh, putting myself into positions that seem to be dangerous, which is like around every corner <laughs> in Fall River where I've been going. I'm like, oh my God, today the last, the last 
I was like, and this is this is PTSD mind, right? I'm like, like I start thinking like very irrational things, like maybe somebody has hacked the GPS and knows exactly where I am, and they're gonna get me, like the UPS man. Okay, that's not a UPS man. <laughs> and then um, the last the last two things that I had today. Usually all of the deliveries are like one minute to three minutes apart. That's like the extent of it. Tonight, at the end of my shift, it's pitch dark out. They're like, go down this road. That's not even a road, okay? It's not even a road. It's dirt road, but it's a very, very, very long dirt road. And all you can see is darkness. There's no lights. It's just a twisty, windy, dark road, dirt road. But on the map, you can see that you're headed towards water. There's just water. <laughs> like, like, where the fuck are they taking me with my last thing? Again, we go back to, like, maybe somebody has, like, hijacked the GPS. Or this is, this is planned somehow. Like, I, someone could pay enough money to be like, hey, add this delivery onto the end of her thing. Take her out to the end of this fucking road. And we're gonna kill her. <laughs> And, and it's been, right, it's been even worse lately because I saw a reading recently that was like, somebody's going to try to jump you, like multiple people. And I was, so now I'm even more, right? And while I'm going out there, there's multiple cars in front of me, like four different cars. One of the cars, it's, it's like a old type of, it's like the truck that doesn't have a bed and their lights are hanging off the back of it so literally one of their taillights falls off halfway and is just dangling on the ground on the dirt ground two of them go off onto this other dirt road and just one of them is now going with me I'm just following this truck to my death <laughs> to deliver packages it's so bad that when I got there right I got to the guy's house with the guy that lives at the house he was like, how do you like that road? It's like the hills have eyes. So I'm not crazy, okay? Because that road was bad. He's aware of it. I'm aware of it. We're all aware of it now. But I feel like other people who've never been through that type of shit or don't have that, like, on guardness would just drive out there and be like, boop, 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 and be fine. And not think of all those other things. I even recorded going out there because I was like, this is really fucked up. I'm like, look what, I don't know where I'm going because there's no houses until you get to the other end. And when you get to the other end, there was multiple houses. But what are the chances, right? This happens to me all the time. What are the chances that nobody's home in a neighborhood except for the motherfucking house that I'm bringing a package to? Why? Why are you always coming home? When I'm delayed, I gotta take a picture. When you interfere... Now I gotta hit a button and write why I don't have a picture of it because I handed it to the fucking customer. And it's like, these people pop up out of nowhere in these desolate areas. But it's always like, they're either pulling out of their driveway or like, I park in front of their driveway because I'm just going real quick and then they're home waiting for me to get out of the way. And I'm like, Wait, why? Is there a magnet on my body that's pulling the people to their packages? Anyways, that's that's just some of it. So, we are on hard guard to keep ourselves safe. Re-experiencing symptoms related to early childhood memories from before you could even speak may come in the form of vague, uncomfortable felt sense or physical pain. High arousal symptoms characterized by feelings of anxiety, aggression, irritability are often experienced by individuals with CTPSD. So, these often manifest as what's known as emotional dysregulation, or sweeping emotions of sadness, rage, or fear. These can feel intrusive or even hijack your relationship with yourself, your family, and your world, and can result in feeling stuck in patterns of disconnection, resentment, abandonment with family and friends. Yeah. It's a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster. Depressive symptoms. Andrew grew up in a home where he felt responsible for his alcoholic mother. Sadly, she never recovered despite his many attempts to help her. As an adult, he continues to feel ineffective at work. 
When he receives any critical feedback from his boss, he feels deeply rejected and thinks, what is the point of trying? High arousal symptoms are one side of the CPTSD equation. Low arousal symptoms such as hopelessness, despair, depression reside on the other side. These symptoms typically result from living in a threatening environment with no escape. When you have no ability to change your situation, you may be feeling ineffective, powerless, and helpless. Shame and unworthiness are signature depressive symptoms of CPTSD. And I, I know, like, like I said, it's a roller coaster sometimes. It just, even like just growing up like that, right? Like you can't change your childhood home, you know? Like you could call, like what are you gonna do? Call up and be like, oh, hey guys, I'm being abused. So take me to like another place that's probably gonna be worse. Like most kids know. And parents threaten you anyway. So they're like, if you ever say anything about this, I'll kill you. And you're like, all right, I'm not going to say anything about that because she's going to kill me. So you get depressed. You get sad. Like, I'm just stuck here. Nothing I do is good enough. And that sticks with you because when you finally can get out of that situation, like, okay, I'm free. I don't have to live here anymore. I don't have to do this shit anymore. You've already been conditioned so long to feel that way about the world or your circumstances and you will keep getting stuck in ruts or you will keep self-sabotaging to keep yourself in the circumstance you know it's hard it's hard to be on this planet i don't think there's a person on the planet that has been unscathed by some form of trauma how much of it you got it probably just depends on where you grew up and with who but it's never too late to have these things happen and it's never too late to fix what happens as a result. So in practice, the following questions will help identify your own emotional and cognitive symptoms of CPTSD. What avoidance symptoms? Denial, repression, idealization, minimization, addictions, or disassociation do you experience and in what ways? Do these symptoms get in the way of you living the life you want? So. That's a little practice you can write about and just say, like, you know, like, what ones do you feel like you are dealing with and um, are they getting in the way of living the life you want? I feel like I've just discussed many of the ways over the past couple of days of doing this, um, you know, and then right here we have what intrusive symptoms, anxiety, flashbacks, nightmares, hypervigilance, emotional dysregulation, interpersonal problems do you experience? In what ways do these symptoms interfere with your life now? Okay? And there's a lot there. So, like, write it out, man. Write it out. What is it that you think is going on? Or speak it out. Make a video of yourself and watch it back. Um, or have a discussion with somebody. But uh, tomorrow we'll talk about recognizing shame and all of that, okay? I just saw the physical symptoms page and it's like pfft, all highlighted. Like I said, I've been through it. I experienced this shit, man. So, I get it. Uh, thank you very much for being patient with me while I'm getting back to feeling healthy again. I have not projectile vomited in so long. I'm like, I don't even know. I, I honestly... Part of me has been thinking, like, is this subconsciously, like, my body being, like, you do not belong in that job? Because I know. I don't, I know. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I don't need to work there to make the money that I make. You know what I mean? Like, I could make that money in one day. So I need to get back into that energy, that vibration, that mindset, that, that creation. And... Like I said, we go through these things. We gotta go through them. We gotta get over them. We gotta rise up out of them. And sometimes it takes time. But yeah, I feel like my physical body is like, nope, you're gonna get hurt. You're gonna puke. You're gonna be dying so that you can't go there. But what I will say, and I'm very grateful for, um, like tonight when I got home, I had to fill... Two out of the five new orders on Etsy, I filled them so I could send them out tomorrow. And then I had two private readings to do. And um, that's been a common occurrence lately. That's why I haven't been producing as much either. Um, it's because I'm working a full-time job. I'm also doing DoorDash. 
I'm also doing private readings. I'm also running the Etsy shop. I'm also doing all the things I normally do, but just spreading myself among all of those things to acquire enough stability to continue to grow and build and feel confident and safe and secure. Because when we feel confident, safe, and secure, and we have like a good little nest, it's easier to grow on. I was like, there's nothing underneath me. I'm just dying. I'm falling. I'm falling. I'm falling. And I'm, I'm going to be homeless if I don't do something. So it's already working. You know what I mean? The upswing of orders, the upswing of just abundance coming in. And I got to see, like, yep, they did definitely take out taxes from that 700. I would have been paid $900 if they didn't take out taxes. So I'm like, and that was like for 42 hours. So I don't know. Cause he was like, I calculated, my dad was like, I've calculated how much I think you make off of like the first check that I had. But I was like, that was training pay. Okay. There was training pay, ride along pay, and then driver pay. So meant driver pay now, 42 hours of driver. Pay. That's a lot of fucking hours, dad. It's a lot on top of everything else. Seven, I've made, I've made $700 off of one video before, man. So we're getting back into that. In my name, namaste.